Members of Duluth's Combined Honor Guard volunteer their time for a touching public service to give a final salute to veterans at their burial. Honor Guard, change, click. As nice as all that is, Captain Joe Veneer has to stay on top of his aging group and make sure they stay sharp. Like today when we were down there, I kind of had a holler them because some of these guys, you know, you tell them and tell them and tell them, and then when it comes to do it, they say, what did you say? <laughs> Same thing at our meetings, you know, we have these meetings, and they're sitting back there, you know, and it's pretty soon they start blabbing. I rap out of gavel, you know, quiet them down. What did you say? What did you say? Uh, damn it, I said, I'm getting tired of repetition stuff. Most of the Guard members, like Joe Veneer, are World War II vets, retired so they have time to serve at the funerals of fellow veterans. They show up in full dress, give a 21-shot goodbye while in formation. Ready, aim, fire. And present the family, usually the widow, with the American flag that draped over the casket. Honor Guard member John Beals of Duluth, a veteran of Korea, says it's a show of respect and often a comfort for the family to get this kind of send-off. I think it is an honor because I think all veterans should have one final farewell respect. Uh, it adds dignity to it, it brings clothing to the families. It isn't that we're looking for any kind of glory or that ourselves, that isn't the idea. It's just to make it a little easier for the family that we understand, we know what they're going through. And we're very proud of them. David Holmbeck is an original member of this chapter of the Combined Honor Guard, which started in 1970 when several VFW posts got together. He says the Honor Guard is the natural progression of a camaraderie that military service vets share. Holmbeck was in Army Air Force Intelligence in England during the Second World War. He knows firsthand the high price many of his friends and comrades paid back then. When I think of all the buddies, that were killed over there. There's a cemetery in Cambridge, England. It has 46,000 of my Air Force friends there. Serving at the local West End VFW and being part of the Honor Guard are ways Holmbeck feels he can continue to serve those who never made it home. Now the Duluth Combined Honor Guard is finding itself at more and more funerals of World War II vets. In their 70s and 80s, they are a vanishing breed. Holmbeck hopes with their passing, lessons of their service will not be forgotten. First of all, to have respect for other people, for other people, for other nations, for other ideas, as long as they are not promoting violence and stuff like that. I have never promoted anything like violence. I'd never want to. I don't want anybody to have to do that. The things that we had to face during World War II, especially over in Germany and over in Japan, was violence on the part of uh, the hierarchy of the governments that promoted that. I lost two of my friends from the 135th National Guard unit that I belonged to. They were over in the Baton Death March there. I lost two of them. People cannot ever forget the horrors of that war. As an intelligence officer, he remembers the first aerial photos he received of Buchenwald and other Nazi death camps. It was horrible. It, 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 you know, there is no reason that a human being, whether he is German, Jewish, or whatnot, has to be treated like that. There's no reason for it. But it was done, and it was done because of some peculiarities in the minds of people like Hitler and Hitler and so on. I don't want to see anything like that anymore. That's enough. This day, the Honor Guard was paying tribute to one of its own. 
Founding member Sid Henson was in the casket about to be lowered into the ground of the Park Hill Cemetery. Captain Joe Veneer and Sid Henson joined the Honor Guard together in 1970. This, says Veneer, is an appropriate final salute for a friend and comrade. They deserve it. I was in the infantry, 104th Infantry Battalion. Over in Europe, I went, uh, we landed after D-Day, 18 days after D-Day. We went up into, uh, we landed in France and we went up into Cherbourg, Holland, Belgium, France, Holland, Belgium, and then into Germany. And uh, it was tough. I was in an infantry outfit. I was a rifleman when I was over there. I went to F Company, and I, we lost 80% of our men in that company. A member of the vanishing World War II vets, called by some America's greatest generation. <laughs>